Hello, good morning, my heart is Dinky Do. It is just me, Scotty McClure, saying welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday morning pop up. You see, nothing gets past me, of course. Great to have you with us. I hope you're all well and that as many of you as is possible will come and join us for today's live stream. This is where the world gets together during the coronavirus, during the lockdown, during all the concerns and anxieties and worries that you have. Come and join us here with me, Scotty McClue. Harry Newton's watching. Did you do, Scotty? Says Jack. Well done, Jack. Right on there, fast. Good for you. Peter Garvin's watching. Welcome, Peter. Lovely to have you with us. And a very dinky do to you as well. And, uh, of course, we've got Gordon Robertson. Good morning, Scotty. Very early today, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us. Giuseppe Bacchetti. Dinky do, Scotty McClure. Dinky do. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Giuseppe. See, si. uh, Gordon Robertson, welcome, I say. Karim Zakaria has joined us. Good stuff. <coughs> Yesterday, very, very successful um, live stream and broadcast. I see about uh, two and a half thousand of you joined us. Hello, good morning. How are we today, says Kareem. Very, very good today, Kareem. Excellent. And uh, just working away. Very, very busy. I didn't realize I had quite so much to do. Um, I'm on time for once, Gordon. You've been on time all your life. When you arrive, that is on time. All right. Alan McGee is watching. What a top man. Dinky do, Alan. Lovely to have you with us and very much a valued uh, member of the McClue family. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. All these terrific broadcasters, journalists, actors, um, showbiz, gardeners, joiners, plumbers, all you fabulous people out there. Top of the morning to you, says uh, John Jones. Uh, Royston Mayor, Dinky Doo, welcome. Russell Robertson, Dinky Doo. Who was that? Kim Smith is watching. Dinky Doo, Kim. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, Russell has just joined us. Good for you, Russell. Well done. I didn't realize people were clapping last night for Boris. We're always clapping. We're saying wonderful, wonderful people. Thank you, thank you for all the effort everyone is making. Kevin Kelly is watching. Peter Garvin, thank you for the welcome, Scotty. Just to say a big shout out to all the retail workers of which I am one. Yes, for the retail workers. Have you eaten breakfast yet, says Giuseppe Bacchetti? No, Giuseppe Bacchetti. Um, I tend to have breakfast when I finish the broadcast and we're uploading to YouTube and uh, trimming everything, sorting everything out, all that sort of stuff. So I am in uh, lockdown editing uh, just after the show and then it's brunch time. Josie Smith, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. Nikki Graham's watching. Good, Nikki. Well done. Gordon Drysdale has joined us. This is excellent, folks. Wonderful to have you with us. Those of you who've just joined us for the first time and you're wondering what on earth is going on here. I'm Scotty McClue, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and I'm doing my tiny, teensy, weensy bit for the lockdown just to keep people sane or to keep people a bit mad at uh, 10 o'clock sharp each weekday morning. I pop up to say hi to the nation. Uh, David Turner's watching. Dinky do, Scotty, says the wonderful Dinky Graham. Uh, Gordon Ritchie, <clears throat> hoping the UK enforces tougher restrictions for COVID-19. Ireland has just introduced a travel curfew and €2,500 fine for unnecessary travel. Uh, 36 deaths in Ireland last night. UK deaths. 784. Well, I don't think the message could be clearer, and I don't know if you can see on your Facebook page, but I've just done the wrap, the Stay Safe Scotty McClue wrap, which you'll also get on uh, TikTok. I am massive on TikTok, at Scotty McClue. Stephen Mitchell's watching. Good morning, sir. It says, Antu Jundu. 
Anto Jondu, what a fabulous name. Where are you from, Anto? I love that. Stephen Mooney, dinky do. Welcome, welcome. Danny McNeil's watching. Guys, we're going to have to do the big shares uh, and get these numbers up. No point in having the most fabulous show on earth and um, nobody knows about it. So we all need to share and share and share. Uh, Stephen Mooney and Danny McNeil, dinky do. I had a pancake and jam for my breakfast with a banana for my fruit. Jack, you can't beat a pancake and jam and a banana. That is all good stuff there. Gordon Rich, I like a pancake. Does anybody like to toast a pancake? Does it, or is this sacrilege? Does anybody like to fry a pancake? Yes, if you have a fry up. The daddy of all talk shows says Giuseppe Baschetti. Very kind of you, sir. I genuinely do agree with you. I concur. I believe that the Scotty McClure talk show is the daddy of all talk shows. <clears throat> so there we are. Scotty McClure, yesterday was such a lovely day. Let's hope for the same today to lift everyone's spirits. Absolutely, Kareem. We need to get the numbers up. Let everyone know. I just toast my pancakes. Very nice, Jack. Little bit of jam. Do you do butter and jam? Anto Jondu is from Guyana. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, Anto. I had a bowl of wheat bangs. Ah, David Turner. Very clever. Scotty McClue's wheat bangs. Yes, somebody might be having a late plate of wheat bangs, he used to say on the show. There's Giuseppe with the green, wonderful stuff. We love that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you all with us, folks. Live stream for about an hour each weekday morning. Last week, 15,000 of you joined me. Any radio station would nowadays would give their eye teeth for 50,000, uh, 15,000 people to join them. And uh, as I say, when I was on the radio, we could get up to quarter of a million per half hour. Oh, fabulous days. But then there wasn't so much media then, you see. So you can't put all the blame on the radio stations. The wonderful James Bauer is watching. Dinky too, James. Lovely to have you with us. Graham Broadley. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Graham. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a shout-out show. When people join at first and they say, is he just talking about the people that are watching? You say, uh, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. Here's the sharing. We need to get the sharing on the go. Uh, yes, Giuseppe does. Had three yesterday, Scotty McClure. Three pancakes. Whoa, well done. That's a bit bright, that light. I'll just move it slightly to the side. There we go. Excellent stuff. Uh, Scotty McClure, your thoughts on Trump stopping all funds to World Health Organization because he thinks they're working with China. I think nowadays it doesn't matter who's working with who if we're all working together to make the planet well and recover from whatever has happened. Whether it escaped from a lab, whether somebody put it there, whether it was sprayed on us, whatever theories, conspiracy theories, anything, it doesn't matter. We are where we are. And we should all be working together to, uh, you know, get out of this big style. Fit like Maloon, says Graham broadly. I, who is your dues, Graham? It's lovely to have you with us. And hey, a loon like yourself, watching for the Northeast. Very important. Dinky do, Scotty from Linwood. Oh, Craig Bell, the famous Linwood, the manufacturer of motor cars. I used to work in banking. And when I was working in banking, um, you know, I can remember a lot of people from Linwood. Wonderful stuff from the car uh, factory at the time. And uh, I think it was quite big money. So there we go. George Galloway is the mother of all talk shows and you're the daddy. Ah, Giuseppe. Excellent stuff. Scotty McClue is the daddy. Did you say you want to get the sherry on the go? Is it not a bit early for that? Well, Gordon, 
you know, I, I mean, I was just wondering if you would like one. Um, you know, I mean, I wouldn't join you, of course, because I wouldn't like people to think, you know, but uh, there are no get the sharing on the go. What do you think of all these idiots not taking advice of what's going on, James Barr? I don't understand these idiots. You know, I just don't understand. They're not just putting themselves at risk. They're putting other people at risk. And they don't seem to understand that this virus can kill you. So there we are. You know, so they've got a choice. Do they disobey the rules? Do they flaunt the rules? Um, or do they uh, do they die? You know, wonderful Frank Gilfeathers watching. What an absolute top man. A wonderful, wonderful television reporter. Uh, Gordon Stilling used to work with Frank. Marvelous man. Lovely to see you, Frank, and to have you with us. Gordon Stilling is watching. Our autodidact, one of them. And uh, are you still looking that up, Gordon? Did you find out about that? I was wondering if the official McClue car should become an A135. What do you think? I remember um, going round an estate, an old uh, Scottish estate that was no more, and parked up was a Humber, either a Pullman or an Imperial. A huge big beast from the late 1940s, early 50s. And I thought to myself, that is quite a piece of kit. You know, the only problem we've got now, when I was wee, these cars could be handed into the garage. And there were mechanics who had served in the war who were able to put them right, right away. Do we still have the people that could put these cars right? And I also remember looking at uh, an elderly... Uh, rolls cloud and looking at the the brakes which are an incredible setup and I thought to myself what a wonderful setup but you know do do I want to be running about and that sort of thing you know very interesting thank you do Scott McClure you're still in the radio says Darren James Lamb I was on the radio till about three months ago and then they thought they'd try love songs so I said, well, good luck with that. Come back to me if you change your mind. Uh, Scott McClure, fun question. How and what do you do to keep your fitness maintained during this time? Kareem Zachariah, as I have, uh, I think, said before, um, I walk from uh, my bedroom in the morning to uh, the studio here at McClure Towers. So that must be a good, I would have thought a good 15, 20 meters. I wind my own watch. I'm forever lifting and laying a cup with tea in it. Um, I walk the dog as uh, much as I'm permitted to do so. That's not terribly far nowadays, obviously. Um, so I do these things. And I have a wee stretch in bed when I wake up. I have a wee stretch in the bath. So there's quite a lot of activity going on there, hence my sylph-like wood nymph of a figure. Excellent. And, of course, it's all solid muscle as well, Kareem. Um, so there we are. Do you know Ian Perry who used to do local radio in Shrewsbury? Kevin, uh, Ian's name rings a bell with me. I have a lot of friends in local radio. When you were a banker, were you opening your drawers for cash? Oh, absolutely. And you want to have seen me count cash? Incredible. Well said, Scott A, says James Barrow. What about if we introduced a proper sanction for people disobeying the rules? Should we arm the police, wait, wait for it, with a birch and uh, you know, I saw a guy arguing with the police in the in the city centre, and they were going, "Go home!" And he's going, "Ah, go home or whatever," and all that sort of stuff. Now, should we say give the police the power to birch people who are disobedient? I mean, rankly disobedient. So instead of saying, "Go home or you'll be arrested," "Go home or you'll be fined," um, just the police with a mask on, right up the close, wallop, wallop.
wallop. Now, you get yourself off home. Uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, just a thought. But um, you shouldn't get it if you're over, if you're under 21. You need to be over 21 and flaunting the rules for a good butchering. What about that? Do you want a classic, Scotty? I don't know if you could call it a classic, but I have two cars. One is 20 years old and the other is 28 years old uh, last week. So there you go. So that's the sort of thing. Classics, what would be your favourite classics be? Love the old Rovers, the, the 110. That's the stuff, the 105. Uh, James Bauer, to keep fit, I take the dogs out for a good walk. And uh, at work, I can do a lot of walking. Of course, excellent. I was shouting to the postman the other day, who, uh, of course, does a tremendous amount of walking. Very, very fit. And he was saying, you know, th he thanks God that he can get out for a walk. Uh, Karen Woodrow's watching. Did you do, Karen? Lovely to have you with us. Uh, great to see you again, Scotty. You were the highlight of my nights when I was a teen. Legend forever, says Darren James Lamb. What station was that, Darren? Because I was on one or two. Uh, thoughts on lockdown, Scotty? When do you see it ending? I think, Thomas Whedon, it might go on a bit longer than you think. This is just me talking. I don't have any hard and fast rules, but I think we're in April now. I think if we do April, May till the end of June and see where we're at then. So I think it could be another month or two. Gordon Robertson, if the police were allowed to birch people, you'd just be encouraging the perverts to break the curfew. Oh, I think even a pervert. I don't know any perverts, Gordon, and to my knowledge, I've never met any. But I think you would have to be some pervert to take a good birching off the polis and then think, well, I enjoyed that. Do you know what I mean? Even with all your gear on and, oh, no, I think, Gordon, yes. Yes, I think so. I don't think there'd be a queue. I mean, the police are not uh, in the in the sort of dominatrix mode. No, no. Uh, they need tougher laws, Scotty. Send them for a swim in the Clyde. Ooh, harsh James Barr. Harsh and savage. Josh Dick, good morning, Scotty. You can be the 21st century Captain Mannering. We love Captain Mannering. Yes, Arthur Lowe, wonderful actor. So there we are. Yes, all right, Wilson. Um, beating up somebody is not the answer, Scotty McClure, unless we're a communist state. Giuseppe Bachetti, I'm not talking about beating up. I'm talking about, uh, you know, a good birching on the backside. Um, you know, just uh, that sort of thing. I don't think there's anything communist. I think when we hanged people and we birched people and the police used to give somebody a wallop and in school they used to punch us or slap us or belt us, Caners, all these things. I don't think there's anything communist about the state then, Giuseppe. So communism um, doesn't necessarily go with um, spare the rod, you know. Uh, Stephen Menzies, dinky do, a very good morning to you. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, God is sterling, the birch gets my vote. Uh, the Volvo 960 is my classic and a 29 built in Canada. 2.9 litre, is that right, Gordon? Interesting. Scotty McLean, when I was a boy, I loved the Ford Mondeo and the Vauxhall Cavalier. Yes, does anybody remember the Talking Maestro? So there we are, Karim Sagaraya. We've got two classics, an old Talbo camper van and a Rover SD3, like in Keeping Up Appearances. Ah, Kevin Roberts, very nice. I had an SD1. So there we are. James Cotters is watching. Thank you, James. Lovely to have you with us and welcome. Guys, we've done no sharing this morning and the numbers are not where they should be. Come along, I say. Let's get the sharing done. Get everybody on. Get the chit-chat going. Yesterday was fabulous. About two and a half thousand of you joined us yesterday and 15,000 joined us last week so good stuff guys um the first one's still leading with um nearly six thousand of you wonderful stuff right sharing 
So I shall just share now in public. If you can all do the same, that's that. Gone, guys. Excellent stuff. Scotty Clear popping up just for you. Thank you, dear. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to social media. You can be absolutely mobbed. I've popped up and had a few hundred watching. I've popped up and had uh, nearly 30,000 watching. So I would imagine it depends on where you come in the uh, in the social media pecking order. So there we go. Right. I'll also share again to a page, and I'll share to the big Scotty McClue page. The sharing is very serious. You all distracted me there, and I never get any sharing done. For goodness sakes, what is going on? I ask you. There we are. And we'll just put live now. So that's gone to the Scotty McClue page. If you can like that page, guys, there's almost 6,000 on that one as well. Seems to be quite a magical figure, the 6,000. Um, but this should be absolutely massive by now because Scotty McClue has been around for a wee while. I think it was Hallam FM. I'm from Doncaster. Darren James Lamb. Hallam FM. It would be indeed a wonderful radio station. Hallam FM. And then I went back a good few years later. And um, there we are. Thomas Peden. You never, ever, ever post anything like that, even in jest. So there we are. Uh, Mark 2 Cavalier. The SRI 130 was a great car, Kareem says Kevin Roberts. So there you are, yes. Then I went back to Magic Radio in Yorkshire and had the most fantastic time. Twice I've lived in Sheffield and twice I've enjoyed every second of it. Wonderful. Um, I should have gone up and got myself a wee pot in Emmerdale. Uh, good morning, Scotty, from Costa del Sol Coats. Malcolm McGregor. Welcome, 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 Mr. McGregor. It's wonderful. I uh, I can remember a gentleman whose name was uh, Gregory, and he said, I am now McGregor. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Um, Alistair King's watching Dinky Doo. Rob Garland is watching Dinky Doo. When the show used to start with the Scotty remix, Rob Garland. That's the only thing about social media. I miss all my music. I would have played you some lovely songs. I would have had my theme tune. I would have had all the little inserts. But social media, you're into copyright, so you can't really do it. You can have the odd bit of a hymn or a wee Scottish ditty, but that's your whack. Ian Kerr's watching. Good morning, Scotty. Being serious, they do need to make laws tougher like heavier fines. Give them a police record. Not a nice thing to have. Absolutely news, Mayor, but a good butchering. Summary justice dealt out at the moment with plenty of warnings. If you now, that's three times, I've told you to go home and isolate. If you're now disobeying me, I have no choice but to either arrest you or butch you. I think, in fact, I'll just butch you. Whack! 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 Now, away home, you know, and uh, just see how that goes. Do you think the police ever get the respect back after the minor strike? One of my relatives is in the force and reckons things changed. Things did change, Kevin Robertson, because you had a prime minister who had turned the people against the people. The state against the people in this country. Now, the people in this country um, are very rarely against the state, right? And the state panics a bit instead of listening to what people are saying, you know? So this country is very, very good. Even after all the slaughter and murder and death and blood and wounding and injury of the First World War, which could have been avoided, um, you know, there were risings of people. There were demonstrations, particularly at George Square in Glasgow, although apparently there was never any tanks in George Square in Glasgow. The photos are doctored. So there you are. Very, very interesting. Uh, lol. I had a talking maestro, but my first love was my 1974 Mini Clubman. 
Oh, the Clubman was a great wee car. It, the Mini was a great car. And I'll tell you a lovely story about the Mini. I had a wonderful friend who was very big in cars. And um, he was very friendly with Alec Izigonis, the designer of the Morris Minor and the Mini. And um, Alex was a very, very hard worker, Alec Izigonis, obviously. And he said to him, Red said to him, Alec, why don't you come for, for Sunday lunch with us? So there you are. And uh, he said, I, I'm just so Max Red, you know, I mean, we well, probably wouldn't say Max. He was a big smoker, Alec. And uh, he said, I'm just working so hard at the moment. He said, I don't really have the time. He said, come over for Sunday lunch, then go up to my study and do your work there and come down and have some supper with us. So Alec went over to the house and had Sunday lunch and went away to work and he was working in the mini. And Red said to him, how are you getting on with all that? He went, I'm, I can't quite get the power to weight ratio right. I've even tried putting the engine sideways in the front. <laughs> and of course, that was the uh, front wheel drive mini. Uh, talking maestros are worth a few bob now. I always wondered if the Vauxhall was going to bring out a laughing cavalier. So there we are. Alistair King, I had an MG Maestro. Yes, the Maestros were great. They were great wee cars. I liked all these. I had an Allegro van den Pla. My current car is a Peugeot, a 2008. Um, is that the model or is that the year? Says Green. I love it. Peugeots again, beautiful cars, gents cars, nice and quiet. I adore the Jaguar E-Type. I'd love to get one when I'm older. Wow. Uh, you have to save up your pennies, the Jack. Um, even a kind of rougher one, they're pretty dear, and they take some running. Triple carburetors. You're talking my language, cars. Alistair, of course. John King's watching. Thank you, do, John. Craig Downey, good morning, Scotty. I hope you've been very well. Craig, lovely to have you with us. And dinky do, excellent stuff. Darren James Lamb, I remember doing it those were the days. Absolutely, Hallam FM, we had the whole, the whole world was rocking uh, from the Don Valley Bull. Remember that, fantastic. Good morning from the Philippines, says Jamar Nujamontes. Uh, have I said that right? Jamar uh, Nujamontes. Good morning from the Philippines. Love to the Philippines. I think it's fabulous that we're watching Scotty McClue all over the world. Wonderful Susan Forrest watching. Good morning, Susan. Lovely to have you with us. And thank you. Dave Anderson's watching. Morning, Dave. Thank you, do. Can you register for PRS, Scotty? We could all chip in and get you on the PayPal of oh, Kevin Roberts. How fantastic. Well, you've not just got PRS. You've got PPL. You've got MCPS. You've got all these different things. And that's why running a radio station can become quite pricey. Uh, so there you go. Alistair King, I have a fair few in my collection. A Mini Turbo Mark 1 Sierra, three door, four before. Uh, Reliance and plenty of Volvos and a van. Uh, Scotty, I'm Craigo from the YouTube live streams. I know Craig. It's fantastic. And we enjoy you on the YouTube live streams. There's 700 pieces of uh, audio and video on Scotty McClure's YouTube channel, so nobody should ever be bored. Stephen Men says, that brings back memories, the Allegro van den Pla. My uncle had a brown one with a big chrome grill and oak veneer dash. I don't think it would be oak, Stephen. I think it would be bar walnut. And um, that was mine. Mine was chocolate brown. As well, a gorgeous wee thing. And of course, Van den Pla put uh, a lovely paint finish on them. It gleamed. The price of the Jaguar e type has been appreciating. All these big classic cars are appreciating. Very interesting. Uh, Junior's watching Scotty has been testing the dog. Naughty boy. <coughs> I mean, I did check out after Gordon Sterling. Uh, give him a credit. Credit where credit's due. Jogged my memory about the Austin A135, the big princesses of the 50s, the 60s, the sheer line, that sort of thing. 
And um, Stephen says you're right. Yeah, the bar walnut dashboard. How's it gorgeous? The door cappings. Beautiful. Um, and uh, Stephen's saying, and I can remember Land Rover. You could also get a wooden uh, hand grip for the handbrake to match the dashboards. Uh, Scotty McClure, a man was fined after driving from Nottingham to London, 127 miles to buy a loaf of bread. For goodness sake, yes. Why don't radio stations do the jingles anymore? I used to love the jingles for the news and the weather. I don't understand it, Kevin. The only thing I can think it would flag up the fact that they're supposed to be a local radio station, but they're networking from a hub and they're not local, and they wouldn't have all the jingles for the local radio stations. So there you are. I loved the jingles. I remember buying a wonderful jingle package for Centre Sound Radio when I set it up. I remember my grandfather, he loved his lads and his comer van, his ladders and his comer van. There you are. Louise Wilde, the dinky do. Excellent stuff. Welcome, 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 I say. You're watching Scotty McClure. Can we have more sharing, guys? Numbers are down this morning. People obviously forgetting or things they've got to do, maybe. Not a problem. So there we are. Excellent stuff. More share, share, share. Um, I'll share to a group. Yay. We must share to a group, guys. Can everybody share? Lada, I hate predictive text. Yes, I thought you might want to change that, Alistair. So there we go. Wonderful stuff. The ladders. Yes, you could get a ladder. I can remember when I was very short on transport. And a guy said, he said, I'll get you a ladder for 50 quid. Wonderful. And they were good. The old Fiat design. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. Now, um... What have we got here? Sharing in a group. Excellent. There we are. Sharing a group. We'll share on the Scotty McClure group. Just let everybody know. Maybe it's wash day for some people and they haven't managed to join us. But everybody on Facebook should be joining Scotty McClure at this time. Craig says, hello, Scotty. How are you this morning? I hope you've been good. I've been so good. You wouldn't believe it, Craig. Went through a few railway vans. My first was the yellow Bedford H.A. It's Bedford, where Vauxhall went. There was the HA, the Beagle, the wee square one, Austin Marina, and then a Maestro. That was actually, the van was a van type of the first Vauxhall Viva. Do you remember the first Viva? I liked them. Did Mrs. McClure make your dumpling, Scotty? Oh, boiled it up in the clout. Wonderful. Malcolm McGregor. The uh, first ever radio station I listened to was Radio Luxembourg, a great wee station. Malcolm McGregor, a great massive station, because it was uh, beaming out from Luxembourg, and people were listening to it right across Europe. I don't know how far it went, and um, it was a guy I worked with that closed it down. I remember that. He was there at the close down, um, and... Uh, I can remember listening to Radio Luxembourg. I think it had first come on in the 1930s. Um, I'd have to get the date. Was it 1938 or something? Radio Luxembourg. Uh, Kareem, very good. Have you heard there's a new restaurant on the moon? Great food, zero atmosphere. Excellent, Jack, we like that. Robert Kerr, good morning, Scotty. Robert T. Kerr. Still got an Austin Marina. Uh, and is it an Austin or a Morris? Uh, the Morris Marina was the one. And uh, I can remember when I was broadcasting on Scott FM and I was raving on about a car I'd seen in India. And it was the, um, I think it's the Hindustani Ambassador, something like that it was effectively um, a Morris Oxford from the 1950s. And they're used as taxis. And I think they put some of the marina running gear into them. Anyway, I said I would like one of these, but how would I get it exported? And I was just on my way for my lunch when uh, one of the secretaries came running out and said, Scotty, there's a lady on the phone. Her husband works for the diplomatic service, and it'd be possible to get you a car. Fantastic. 
My tech training started at Rolls-Royce here in Crewe. Then I went to a ladder garage. Great cars. It was really a Fiat 128. Yes, I had an old friend who had a, a 196 Fiat, and he could stop the fan blade with his finger. There we are. It was a kind of freewheeling fan. Um, do you know that... Uh, oh, God, and Robertson, what are you at? Uh, Austin Morris Marina Scotty, the two-door coupe. The brown suede interior, it's lush. That's right. I can remember being with a friend and we'd been travelling all the way in third in a marina and he then remembered to change it. There are, he wasn't terribly car orientated. He loved them, but he wasn't terribly car orientated. And that was uh, the marina. Um, and I think they had a five-speed gearbox in them. Uh, they sold, I'm sure they sold quite well, but the later Leyland cars, um, you know, I mean, it was a kind of, well, it was mass produced. The other one, the wedge-like Austin Princess that I think became the Austin Ambassador. There were. So anyway, to finish my story from earlier about the um, 1950s, 60 Princess, the A135, that I wondered if it might make good uh, a good McClure car for the public relations work. Um, they're quite highly priced. Uh, the cheapest I saw was 8,000, and I saw one at 11,000. A lot of them have been uh, sprayed white for wedding cars, and I don't think Scotty McClure really would suit a white car. Uh, Scotty McClure have a two-seat Ibiza, and to date they've... Uh, been one of the worst I've owned. So there we are. Right. Okay, Karim. There we go. <coughs> We're not going to all the problems. Don't worry about the cough. Had it for 20 years. You can distance yourself if you so wish, of course. Absolutely. Right. More sharing. Scotty McClure fan group. Get this shared. Wonderful stuff. Get the numbers up. Can everybody share, please? Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Small numbers. My father had several Austin princesses. Which ones, Alistair? The big limos or the wedge? Good morning, Scotty. You're looking well, sir. So your father was a motoring man. Craig Mitchell. Yes, absolutely, Craig. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky do. Scotty McClure doing his teensy weensy bit for lockdown. I pop up each weekday morning at 10 o'clock sharp. Wonderful stuff. And you've got about another 20 minutes of me left. There you are. Uh, have you ever tried motorbikes, Scotty? Never a great motorbike man. Um, I had a lot of friends who were motorbike people. C15, BSA, Starfire, 250, Thunderbolt, Lightning, BSAs, again, were very big at the time. And um, Honda uh, had all that. I had a Puch, Maxi, P-U-C-H, I had an MG Metro used to travel back and forward from Northampton to Scotland. Many a time I'd see a lot of newer cars broken down the motorway. The wee Metro would zoom up and down. There we go. Now, I shall tell you, my first car was a 1952 Austin Somerset. 1200 engine, austerity motoring. Huge big beast, loved to drive it around with a flying A on the bonnet and this tiny little 1200 engine buried away down in the engine compartment. And my uh, second one, which I loved, was a Morris Minor with a super number plate. And um, that was £90. We knew the lady that had had it new and it had been garaged and it had been wax polished with proper Simon Eyes wax, so the rain bounced off it. And uh, gorgeous, gorgeous thing in dove grey. Red seats, ran it for years and years and years. This, uh, you could set up, you could take your feet off everything and put the choke just on one notch and uh, let it just creep forward. It would run forward. Wonderful thing. And uh, a pool starter. Yes, so you turned on the uh, you turned on the ignition and pulled the starter, and uh, this was a 1960 Morris Minor, lovely thing, and then you had a little handle, so if the battery was down, you could go and just give it a half ton, and away she would go. 
The wedge, Scotty, I was only little at the time. We had a blue one, which got written off by a drunk police officer. While we're on our way to the Highland Games at Bunt Island. I was about four years old at the time. Oh, my goodness. I hope you were okay. The Wedge Princess had um, it had the crown on the little grill. Great stuff. All my friends are buying motorbikes, but I still like mopeds and scooters. Well, my first moped was six pounds, and it was a rally runabout. Look that up. There was a runabout and a mobilette. Um, I've got a 1987 Honda Vision. It starts first time every time. That's what I was going to tell you about the Morris Minor. It just started right away. Because the husband of the lady that had the Morris Minor um, had Rolls Royces and all sorts of luxury cars. And he would say that the you know he would take the Morris if there was a problem in the winter. So there you go. It's wonderful. My first Jaguar was an XJ6 3.4 litre with twin tanks. I traded that in for an XJS. Now, which did you prefer? I had a 4.2 chocolate brown biscuit hide. Very, very nice. Um, 1980. 1980. Well, I ran on 86. Shout out for Erin Foy, Scotty. She's tuned in this morning. Loves your show and your YouTube channel, Thomas Peden. Thank you. Very, very much appreciated. And sorry to be so harsh on you earlier, but it's very important we don't have that even in jest. So there you go. Um, wonderful stuff. So welcome, welcome to Erin, and welcome to every single one of you. If you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and uh, the world's most humble man. Excellent stuff. Now, if anybody thinks the shows are semi- they're not. So you're going to get something different every morning, but you've got to be in it to win it. You've got to be in there. But it was all true. Ha ha. No, Thomas. There we are. No, ha ha. We don't want it on here, regardless. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much. And um, would you like a tune? Shall I give you a tune? I'll give you a wee tune. Do you want something on the organ or the piano? Yes, I'll give you a tune. There we are. You can tell me what you think. How's about that? Wonderful. Are we tuned for the nation? There's the organ. for you first thing in the morning just to give you a bit of a lift because I'm hearing that a lot of people are getting a bit fed up with the lockdown some people are going a bit stir crazy that's an idea do you think we'll get rid of COVID Scotty or will it linger in the background I can't tell you because I am not a clinician or a microbiologist or an epidemiologist or any of these things um, but I think it will help immensely if we weaken it that it starts to just die out because it can't go from person to person. So there you are. So I would think about that very, very carefully. Uh, what note do you get if a piano falls down a mine shaft? A flat minor. A flat minor. A flat minor. Oh, you're very harsh. I always remember having a discussion with a gentleman who owned a traction engine. And owning a track and traction engine is not for the faint-hearted. Craig Mitchell says, are we tuned with a bit more swing, please, Scotty? Yes, I might add a bit of swing for you. 
Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Paul G. Curry. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClure, will you play a wee song today? Karim Zachariah. I've just played a wee song. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Um, I think that uh, the coronavirus, if we can get it to fade out for now, if it loses its host. See what I just did there? How good was that? If it loses its host, right? We bit of a comfort break, guys. Hey! Roasting hot in the studio this morning. A fantastic a comfort break from a clue. Have you had your porridge this morning, Scotty? Uh, no porridge comes, uh, porridge comes just after. So there we are. Um, I'll give you a wee song. What, what song you like? You want a bit more swing to it? Um, uh -huh. A bit more swing. swing for you. A little bit of swing time. First thing in the morning, you can't beat that, can you? Uh, so yes, yeah, so what was I going to tell you? So the uh, the chap I was talking to that had the traction engine, and they're not for the faint hearted. And um, I was up on the bridge of this thing and I said to him, uh, what happens if you're giving it you know, big lakes down the road and a dog runs out. And he went, well, you'd have a flat dog, you know, <laughs> because this thing was a, a road roller. Huge thing. Incredible. Now, <laughs> morning, Scotty. This is Tony Mac. Morning. Uh, sorry, Scotty, my PC froze and I was making a wee cuppa. There's a wee tune for you, Kareem. Morning, Tony. If people would do as they're told and stay at hook, I think you mean home, Alistair, we would get rid of the virus a lot faster. Correct, sir. Stephen Menzies, my colleague who drives a steam train specials over Scotland has got a Sentinel steam truck. That's some machine. That will be now. Stephen Menzies, if I remember correctly, does it have a chimney going up the back of the cab? So there you are, just a thought. You see, steam was wonderful, but the government brought in diesels. Uh, steam is not the most efficient engine, as a lot of you will know. But the government brought in the diesels. But steam traction was wonderful for moving very heavy uh, loads. <coughs> I'm just wondering, there was a boat called the Countess of Bradalbin. She was built in Denison and Barton in 1936. She had twin Glenna for six-cylinder engines. Lovely thing. And um, it was my old friend and boss that bought her, uh, Roy Ritchie, Ritchie's of Gurukh, Ritchie's uh, W.R. Ritchie Ferry Masters. And um, Roy bought and renamed her the Countess of Kempuk. But in 1952... She used to do cruises on Loch Awe and the Second World War put all this into mothballs. A bit like now. And uh, they brought her overland. She was 105 tons. They stripped as much superstructure out as they could. They got people like my uncle, who was a civil engineer, to strengthen the roads because they were just, the old drove roads are meant for marching soldiers. And uh, they brought her, Pickford's brought her, and I wonder if that 
that rig that she was on was steam. Was that possible? Could you still have had steam in the 1950s and heavy road haulage, very heavy haulage? And they brought the Countess by road from Loch Awe, all the way up Loch Awe side, and down to, I would imagine it'd be around Inverary and put her into Loch Fine. And then they could sail her round to Guruk. Wonderful, wonderful story, you know. 1952, the Countess of Bredalbane. And Bredalbane, of course, the Bredalbans as aristocrats, at one point owned as far as you could see in Perthshire, Taymouth Castle. And uh, it was built around 1815, the original one, and the rest High Victorian. And it was seeing Taymouth Castle as a guest of Lord Bredalbane that put Victoria and Albert in mind to have a place in Scotland. And uh, they bought, I think it was around 1847, they bought Balmoral, because the owner of Balmoral, uh, who was a knight, had choked on a fishbone and died. And the estate came up for sale. Victoria and Albert bought it. And then in 18... 52, 53, I think it was, they built the present Balmoral, brand new. Um, home, sorry, I need to figure out how to turn predictive text off. Can anyone help? It's almost impossible, I think. Uh, anybody know how to turn predictive text off for Alistair? That's a bit more like it, Scott here, says Craig Mitchell. Did you like that wee tune there? I remember in Century you were very anti-smoking. Telling listeners to give up. Did you ever smoke, Scotty? Yes, I did, Kevin. Yes, I smoked uh, as a youngster for a fair age. What a lovely rendition, says Gordon Sterling. I thank you, Gordon Sterling. You know about renditing songs. I always remember going to the Traction Engine show at York every year. Fantastic engineering. And it always fascinated me. Of course, a wonderful man for steam engines was Fred Dibna, you know, the steeple jack from uh, Bolton in Lancashire. Uh, yes, boiling at the front along with the chimney. That's right, Stephen. I could just see it in my mind's eye and great big heavy, heavy wheels. Um, Michael Cracknell, beautiful weather yesterday, Scotty. Not so much today. No, not so good today, Jack. I would have thought the numbers would have been up this morning. But uh, you win some. Uh, Zaikai Tang's watching Dinky Doo. Welcome, welcome, Zaikai Tang. Lovely to have you with us. Morning, Scotty. I forgot to say, Scotty, everybody says to me they loved the YouTube stream on Monday. Ah, we'll maybe do another one, Jack. But I wonder five o'clock's a bit early if people are still thinking, although they're at home, they're still thinking in a clock mode, you know? Uh, Thomas Bedden, do you like Cliff Richard? So there we are. Fantastic. We love Cliff Richard. Yes, wonderful. Um, fantastic singer. Hey, Scotty, Carl Carlos Donnelly. Hey, Carl Carlos Donnelly. By the way, happy birthday for yesterday. I can't send you happy birthday because I don't have Messenger on this device. So if anybody messages me, forget it. Morning, Scotty, says John Davidson. Good morning, John. Lovely to have you with us. Carl Carlos Donnelly's watching. Excellent stuff. I wonder why it tells me you've watch, you're have you watching when we've actually already, you know, exchanged communication. It's very interesting, isn't it? How are we getting on, guys? Any more sharing? Share, 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 share. Get the numbers up. Tell 10 to tell 10. Yesterday was a fabulous show. Just uh, about two and a half thousand of you joined me yesterday. And um, almost 6,000 of you joined me for the first one. And uh, 15,000 of you joined me uh, last week. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Scotty McClure, I'll say dinky dear. I'm going to take the dogs out. I'll be watching tomorrow at 10 a.m. Have a great day. Yes, absolutely. Uh, same to you, Kareem. You have a fabulous day and... Dinky do. Thank you for everything I say. He's such a top man, Kareem, and he's always just there for you. Great for sharing. Because, guys, if you don't share, then it fizzles out. So you'd have to say, 
We don't want McClure to pop up. We want it to fizzle out and then not share. And um, then I'll get the message. You know what I mean? When shock jocks go on the radio, does having outrageous opinions really make the lines light up? Well, it depends what makes the lines light up. I can remember going on a station in Newcastle and I said to the phone op, I was filling in because um, their phone in presenter was on holiday. And I said to the phone operator, I said, why uh, are all the lines not fully lit? Because I'm used to phones flashing all the time. Fully lit, the switchboard lights up, start of a show, doesn't stop till way past the end. We used to get, when we were on about, um, I think the maximum amount of friends you can have on Facebook is 1,500. Well, Jack, I've got uh, 4,000 uh, to date, over 4,000. So there we are. Hector Brown, Scotty, my alarm never went off. That's me just up. Hector, welcome. There are no sanctions for being late to the table because we can share it later in the day. You can watch later. All sorts of things. So there we are. McClue's not going away, you know. Um, so, uh, what was I going to say to you? Um, what were we talking about there? We're right in the middle of something very interesting. Where I saw Hector. Oh, yes. Uh, so I've got over 4,000 friends, and I think I've certainly had 5,000, but there's a massive queue uh, of people wanting to befriend Scotty McClue. So what I'm saying to them is, can they follow Scotty McClure? And, um, you know, that would be great as well. And follow all the Scotty McClure pages and share and share and share. And we'll build this up into a pretty big stream. I love, you see, when I get people from the Philippines, from Australia. Sorry, mate, says Hector. No, no, you're here. And remember, it's not mate, Hector. We don't really do meet. We do... um Friend, pal, Scotty, sorry, Scotty. That's sort of idea. Mates more matalos, matalos. It's more a seagoing thing. Scotty, I remember what a nightmare getting through your century was. Well, that's what we're talking about. Easier to get the Sky customer services. Thank you, Kevin Roberts. Uh, yes, I was talking about Radio Newcastle, exactly. So I went on on the Sunday night and I put out my subjects and we had some excellent calls right away, plenty of calls. But the boards weren't full. So I said to the phone operator, I said, why are the boards not full? He went, oh, no, it's, it's quieter on a Sunday night. They'll fill up during the week. I said, no, 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 no. I think it might be 5,000, Jack. I said, no, 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 no. <clears throat> I said, uh, these boards should be full all the time. This is Scotty McClure's show. Uh, there shouldn't be a peep. So he said, well, I... I, I you know, that's what usually happens. So I said, right, people of Newcastle and the Northeast, I don't want any thick Geordies phoning me right now. I want intelligent people only, no thick Geordies. And the phones went on fire. Are you calling us thick? I said, why well, would you have a problem with this? And we were off. I uh, had a nice wee barbecue in the garden yesterday. It's really difficult being grounded in your garden. It brings back memories of when I was a kid. Not allowed out the gate, but the barbecue made up for it. Junior scoffed most of it, though. Good. He's a growing lad, Alistair. So there we are. And uh, we like to make allowances for our offspring. If you've just joined us, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great streaming platforms. I'm here at 10 o'clock each weekday morning, but don't get complacent. We need everybody joining us. You've got to make the stream. I'm only the catalyst. It's your show. And we've got the trusty Skype. If anybody trusted wants to call, you see? So we can actually have live calls. Uh, wonderful stuff. Jack, uh, you're not there. You're not there when you say Thick Jordy. So there you are. Thick Jordies. Jordies, uh, G-E-O-R-D-I-E-S, is the name for the people of Newcastle, the Northeast. So there you are, the Jordies. So I was speaking like that. 
like and and dead do, you know. Uh, not when it's steep, Scotty. That's dad. <laughs> yes, or you're a growing boy too. Uh, master of your craft, Scotty. You're a different shock jock to a devil's advocate to a sympathetic listener. I think, Kevin, I've never, ever accepted the title shock jock, and I have never, ever, ever done any shock jocking. That was the newspapers. I would say things that I thought were of interest to people, but I've always dealt with every single call on its merits. So to try and label Scotty McClure a shock jock, and I think it's cost me some work in the past. And I remember a programmer who was a proper gent programmer, really knew his stuff, and he said to me, Scotty, I want you on air, but I've got to get it past the management. I said, well, just ask them. He went, I have done. I said, I'd like to have Scotty McClue on our station. And the guy went, I, over my dead body. And I said, why did he say that? He went, I don't know. I said, well, ask him if he'll have a coffee with me. So he phoned back, he said, I've persuaded him to have a coffee. I went along and met him in person. Half an hour later, I had a contract for about three years. Could still have had it, probably. He said, I'm very glad to uh, have had this meeting. You start this weekend. You see? So it's all, and I would say to any programmer, who hasn't actually spoken to me face to face, get your act together. There you are, because it'll do your station a lot of good. Uh, Peter Conley, dinky do. So there we go. Wonderful stuff. You know, it's, it's so daft because I see station owners say, Oh, I'd love to have you on my station. But, and I say, But what? I said, I can't get you an audience if you won't put me on. So there we are. And there might only be about another, I don't know, 20 years work left in McClure, and then the game's up. So over the next 20 years, God willing, weather permitting, GWWP, radio controllers need to get their act together, get in touch with me, give me a ring. I mean, somebody will have my number, um, or email me and say, any chance of a coffee, right? And we'll meet up and bring you a massive, massive audience. And any chat about, oh, it's changed, we've lost, uh, just a lot of rubbish. Talk radio, done properly, winner. Uh, sorry, Septon Scotty, turning nocturnal just now, says Peter Conley. Tut, tut, tutity tut. Should we come on later? Should I come on at 11 o'clock, right? Did you hear the Honor Blackman died? So sad. Yes, Jack. But she was, what was she, 90, was she 94, 91 or 94? I remember seeing her, I thought, wow, time flies. <clears throat> and a lot of friends that I had in show business who were in their 50s, and I still think of them as in their 50s. And they're 90. You know, it's absolutely incredible. Um, Alistair Dinky, do you? And when somebody says, uh, I say, how's so-and-so keeping? Have you seen him recently? And they go, oh, Scotty, so-and-so died. Did you not hear? I say, died? How did that happen? He said, well, he was 96. Oh, you know, absolutely amazing, wonderful stuff. <clears throat> you just don't realise. Alistair King, uh, so there we are. Alistair King's talking to, he must be talking to Alistair. I thought he was putting his own name up there. Uh, Richard McCusker's watching. Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome. Oh my goodness. I'm a way over time, guys. I've crashed. Yes, she was 94. I've crashed the vocals. Have a fabulous day. Join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Decide if you want it at 11 or midday or whatever, and we can discuss all that. Until then, fabulous being with you. Stay fabulous. Have a lovely day. And this is Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. Woo!